Five years ago, I set out to do something awesome. Others might call it stupid. Buy a cheap mini bike, modify it to go fast, and then ride it in a 100 mile long mini bike enduro race. After countless builds and failures, my bike, Camo Joe, is complete. Today, my friends and I are gonna ride the biscuits off this thing to make sure it's ready for a new race. I'll also go over the build history of the bike and what we've done this year to make this bike even faster, but also safer? Weird. <laughs> Hot Rod Mini Bike 4 is brought to you by Haviland Motor Oil. And to anyone who started watching this series back in 2018 when I had 600 subscribers, thank you from the bottom of my dorky heart. God bless all you maniacs. So how did we get to this point? Well, uh, originally Camo Joe started out as a run-of-the-mill used uh, Coleman CT200U. In that first build video, we took the original Honda clone engine, we removed the governor gear, up upgraded the valve springs, and then we installed the Makuni VM22 performance carburetor. Uh, and in that first race video, we did pretty good. I think we got about 20, 30 miles in before the entire uh, clutch assembly just grenaded itself and fell apart on the side of the trail. 2019 phase two of this uh, build series was the front suspension. Now this is from a Coleman CT200U EX. Uh, we just kind of tossed the original engine. We got a Predator 212 Hemi engine, and then uh, we did the same uh, uh, governor delete, reinstalled the same carburetor as before, upgraded the valve springs as before. We installed a 30 series torque converter, which you know deleted the possibility of the crappy uh, centrif centrifugal clutch falling apart like it did, because that was lame and made me upset. The race in 2019 was awesome. We didn't finish, I think we got about 65 miles in or so before we had a chain snap, hence why I carry a replacement chain. But that video is still one of my top favorite videos on the channel, I don't know, it's in the top top five, top 10, it's great, you should go watch it. And then the mini bike series went dark for a few years, you can probably guess sort of some of the reasons why, but we came back in 2022 for another build, uh, and this is when things got even more serious. We did a full stage two race engine build on the Predator 212 Hemi engine, and a bunch of other small improvements that made a huge difference. Last year's race kind of didn't end up happening for us. We went down to Bickleton, Washington, and the conditions were insane and I uh, had my wife and daughters with me and we had an opportunity to get out of there while we still could so we did and that leads us to today a full shakedown and reveal how I wired an LED headlight incoming let's first jump back to the shop and install this year's upgrades that make camo Joe the ultimate Coleman mini bike behold my parts and my dog Toby's here now. Toby, Toby, come here. Toby wants to show the parts with me. So first off, we have a new hydraulic front brake kit. This is huge, I'll let you go, I'm sorry. The single worst thing about the Coleman CT200U, in my personal opinion, that that bike started out as, is it just has terrible stopping power. It has that one mechanical drum brake in the back and that has failed me uh, before. <laughs> So we're gonna be doubling our stopping power with this hydraulic front disc brake kit from Go Power Sports. Now, unfortunately, disclaimer time, this kit is not designed for the Coleman mini bikes, whether it be the CT200U or the EX that I have the front suspension from. But uh, the internet says that with just some modifications with a couple parts uh, to make sure this front uh, bracket fits, you're gonna be perfectly fine. We're also gonna be installing two important parts that I've actually tried to install in past years. That is the juggernaut front pulley for my torque converter. And then also we're gonna be using a hot camshaft, camshaft sprocket. Uh, years ago, uh, Redbeard's Garage, uh, Greg, sent this to me and said, hey, if you can use it, use it. And I'm pretty sure that this is the right one. So we're gonna be installing this. And I will definitely be sharing all the part numbers and everything like that. Cool. 
Let's start by breaking down the bike to upgrade our camshaft. To do this, you must drain the oil, remove the spark plug, don't rip the gasket, yeah, remove the valve rocker arms and push rods, then remove the engine side cover and remove the camshaft. Make sure the valve tappets stay in place. Lube the new camshaft and install it by lining up the timing marks. For a detailed Stage 2 race engine step-by-step -step build guide, watch the video linked above. I reassembled everything and adjusted my valve. Let's move on to the front brake. All right, front brake time. I'm really excited about this. This is definitely the most important upgrade we're doing. I'm gonna link to Go Power Sports' video about installing this kit on the bike it was intended for, which is a Trailmaster MB200. What we're doing, I don't think would be sanctioned by them. They probably don't really appreciate me even bringing it up. <laughs> hey, I bought it. They didn't send me anything. I bought this stuff, so let's put it in. We have two issues. We have, first off, the spacing. So we did put two washers in there, which is again, I wish we could put like maybe a slightly thicker washers on there, but I did, again, test fit earlier and it compresses enough that it's still on the bearing and I think we're gonna be perfectly fine. But we can't put, add too many more spacers because if you do that, then we won't be able to engage the lock uh, function of our lock nut. You have this piece right here, which is, uh, a, I guess I'll call it a J bracket. That's gonna go right here like that. And then we're gonna put our lock nut on there and just hand tighten it. Uh, now we can start working on the collar, the lock collar, I think they call it. I'm gonna go ahead and start applying a bunch of beautiful blue Loctite because I don't want this to rattle loose on me. All right, we'll tighten those up more later. Next, we have these two spacers. Those two go in between these two brackets like this. We'll go ahead and put both of those in there. Next, we have our brake caliper that we're gonna put in place. I don't want the uh, brake pads to wear unevenly uh, or too unevenly. <laughs> so what we're gonna have to do is it, behind this bracket right here, we're going to have to put two uh, of these included washers on each of these bolts to space the brake caliper closer that direction rather than this direction. And that makes it so it's not rubbing on one pad too much. Okay, I think our plan worked out just fine. We have clearance on everything. I've tightened everything down. I've added blue Loctite to everything to make sure everything is good. It's a bit of a balance, especially with this axle, which is probably now like a tiny bit too short because of this new added bracket right here. I tightened it down, but not too much because we don't want to heat up the wheel bearings. But we got nice free movement. These pads are brand new. I think we're, it'll be fine after just riding it for a little while and letting these new pads seed a little bit. But after kind of cranking down on it and then letting go of the handle, looking down at the pads, it's now nice and even. As you also probably saw, I had to remove the pad in the front and just have the pad in the back. But now our lock tight is on here with our lock washers in the middle. I think this is gonna work. Front brake is done. How well it works? Well, that's coming up soon. Next, I break down how to install the juggernaut pulley on a 30 series torque converter. It's more complicated than just slapping it in. This is the back plate of the original front pulley. Uh, which goes on, uh, the kit came with this washer, which is all kind of deformed now at this point. We'll put that on there like that. And then this back spacer, and then you put the back plate on. Our, the back of this plate is lined up pretty closely with the back of that plate. So that's also very important. So trying to fit that in like this, first off, the juggernaut does not come with a keyway. Slapping that on there, and you can see that our pulleys, the backs of each of these uh, pulleys is not lined up very well at all, which is also a problem. To fix that, I dug through my uh, collection and found some washers that are the same size as this, although they're, they're a tiny bit thicker. I'm gonna put one in the back, then I'm gonna put the spacer that it came with, and then I'm uh, going to add one more. And then you'll be able to see, and I'll get a close with this, now these plates are lined up much better. And for the keyway, we have a 3 uh, inch uh, square keyway that's about an inch and a half long. 
it fits perfectly like that. And then lastly, obviously, because this sticks out farther, the original bolt is not going to work. Also, the bolt is very deteriorated, so it's not going to probably hold up for very much longer. So I went to the hardware store and got a 5 16 24 grade eight bolt, which is quite a bit longer than the last one. And that one slides in there just fine. This is gonna be way more secure than it used to be. Uh, as you look at that bullet, you can see that a lot of the holding power was the first several threads. So this is going to be a lot safer, which is good because we have a lot more mass. We're gonna be spinning. The only negative so far with the Juggernaut pulley that I can see is the fact that it makes changing belts a little bit harder. The easiest way to install a new belt is frankly just to kind of put it on like this, where we're gonna hold it, get it in there. See if I can do this on camera nice and smooth. Probably not. <laughs> and then kind of just force it there. Hey, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> there we go. Now we need to add oil for these Honda clone engines. You're gonna want about half a quart of 10W30 oil. A good way to tell to make sure you're in the right level is just to have it read full on the dipstick. While I do that, let me tell you about the oil I'm using specifically for my channel sponsor, Haviland Motor Oil. Yes, this is an ad. I'm using Haviland Pro DS, which is a performance full synthetic oil. It's designed by Haviland's engineers for maximum protection and fuel economy, especially in harsh stop and go conditions, like a ridiculous 100 mile long mini bike race. Pro DS is also designed to work under strenuous use and high temperatures, all very important for my race engine. When used in cars and trucks, this oil exceeds the latest demanding industry standards. Also great, this unique packaging that comes in a six quart size. One of these containers will service all my small engines around the shop for the whole year. It's also easy to recycle the cardboard box, leaving 70% less plastic waste than a similar plastic jug. Thanks Haviland Motor Oil for sponsoring Jason Explains. a little uh, unwieldy. It's like it was backfiring a bunch. It's like I thought like something was wrong, but it's just the engine is spinning so high that it's burning off extra fuel, but it doesn't die ever, so. It's just rowdy. Feeling good. <laughs> Feeling great. <laughs> Woo! Does it feel uh, smoother? It feels very smooth. Yeah. And it stops and it breaks. And both brakes work. And then it goes again. Jason, you did it. <laughs> I did, did I? incredible. <laughs> Test riding is good. I should have thought of this earlier. This is the right size of tire, but as you can clearly see, this it must be designed for an ATV, and that one in the back is, is designed for a mini bike because the tire is much more round. So I'm finding it's very, very hard to steer unless I really steer, then it steers really quick. Wrong tire, we'll fix that. Spicy, really, 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 really spicy, and it stops. Headlights. So guys, in past videos, you've asked me in the comments, Jason, how'd you set up your cool Camo Joe headlight? And well, I didn't tell you because I was embarrassed about it. Uh, but now I'm not embarrassed because I upgraded everything and it's not janky anymore. So uh, first, the headlight is just a cheap off-road light from Harbor Freight. Uh, we were joking, this is before the Harbor Freight off-road renaissance. <laughs> anyway, uh, from there we have, you know, the positive going to a switch, which is just a really cheap uh, on-off light switch from Amazon. Wiring crossing down to here to the back where we have our new battery pack. So this is a waterproof uh, case from, also from Harbor Freight, the uh, Apache case, I believe. Has a nice rubber gasket in here, a little bit of extra space for a spare chain, which comes in handy. This is a rechargeable 12 volt battery pack from Amazon, really, really cheap. Then under here, I can actually show you how this is mounted. We just have, we have some bolts, 10 millimeter bolts that are, uh, have uh, like riv, riv nuts into the rack. So it's all very nice and secure and waterproof grommet right there. So that is how I power my headlight. There you go. Well, my friends, 
We've built Camo Joe, we've ridden Camo Joe, but now it is time for the racing team to assemble. Chase, we're right here. We've uh, we've been right here. Been right here the whole time. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, well, you guys are here, but other people aren't. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the race video coming up very soon. Until next time, God bless, and don't forget to do it yourself. Ha! See if it starts. Ha! Yeah!